Our next topic is on access control schemes. Access control schemes are methods used to manage who can view you or use resources in a computing environment. How, you, how do you decide who can access a specific folder and who cannot? Is it by their job title? Is it based on your own decision? Is it by their security clearance level? Is it by their location in the world? How do you decide that? That's with access control schemes. There are multiple different ways to decide that. So these are methods used to manage access to resources. How do you decide who access which resources? What are your policies for that? So these are essential to ensure that only authorized individuals have the appropriate level of access to specified resources. And there are several access control schemes that we will talk about. Here are the different acronyms. So first, we start with role-based access control. RBAC, important acronym, role-based access control. This is based on your role in, in the organization. What is your particular role in the organization? So with RBAC, the administrator determines what kind of access a user has. And this is useful for users in a department with the same job functions. Imagine you have managers who have the same access. You have regular analysts with the same access and you have interns with the same access. You want to make sure that rather than going on every individual user, imagine you have 500 managers in an organization. Rather than going to every individual user and granting access, you can create a role manager and then you grant access. For example, in this example, interns can only change their passwords and view company files. Analysts can change their passwords, view company files and modify data. Managers can do all of that and create or delete user accounts. So rather than going to every intern and setting those permissions, you just create a role called interns and you add interns to that group and they will inherit those roles. So you will be able to only set permissions to one role and then every person within that role will inherit that as a role-based access control based on their role in their organization. You have mandatory access control. Mandatory access control uses labels to determine access. So the operating system provides the limits of how much access someone has to object to an object. It is usually based on clearance levels and is very common in the military, mandatory access control. Every object gets a label and users are labeled with rights on what they can access. So you cannot access top secret data if you don't have top secret clearance. You cannot access confidential data if you don't have at least confidential clearance. For example, that's mandatory access control, very common in the military. Discretionary access control, DAC, here the owner of the data determines access. So you can do it yourself on your systems, on your Windows or, or Mac systems. The owner determines access. So you as a user, you can modify and this has weak security because it is at the discretion of the owner. That's why it's called discretionary access control. You, the owner, you decide who has access to your files. Attribute-based access control, ABAC. This creates a relationship for authorization and there are many criteria used to determine access. So it considers many things like the IP address, like the GPS location, where are you located? If access is only granted to users in the United States and your IP address shows that you are in France, you will not be granted access. GPS location, time of the day. If it's if access is only granted between 8 a.m. and 9 p.m. and you're trying to connect at 1 a.m., you will not be granted access. So that's attribute-based access control. It considers multiple features. All right, guys, so this concludes our course for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms, which includes YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And we have awesome Amazon flashcards for just $15 to help you study.